It's time for your Low Country Real Estate Market Update. It's the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show. Brian is one of the top 1% real estate agents in Charleston. Find him online at listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Or call him at 843-345-1273. Now, broadcasting from the WTMA studios, here's your host, Brian Beatty. Good morning, Charleston, and welcome to to another edition of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on The Big Talker, 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. I'm your host, Brian Beatty. Over six years, I've been on the radio giving you my real estate news and reviews of the housing market, helping you prepare for home ownership or investing in real estate by delivering the facts. So I like to take local, regional, and national news and apply that to us here in Charleston so that when it comes time for you to make a move, you're an informed consumer, you know the right questions to ask, and you can get the most out of that transaction. So if at any point in time you'd like to reach out to me, of course, aside from this show, we do sell real estate during the week. We sell a few hundred homes a year, over a thousand in the Charleston area, and we'd love to earn your business. My number, if you'd like to call me directly, is 843-400-8009. 843-400-8009. That's my cell phone. You'll go uh, directly to me. You won't talk to anybody else, and I can answer your questions, comments, uh, concerns or help you plan for your next move. So 843-400-8009 or visit us online at listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. We've got a really exciting show for you this weekend. We have two guests and we're going to get pretty specific with what's going on in this market right now. I know a lot of you have questions about, are we up? Are we down? Are we sideways? Are we flat? Uh, are prices going up, down? We, we're we're going to answer those questions. But first... I am really excited uh, to introduce Christy McDonald of McDonald Associates. She is our real estate closing attorney, and uh, they obviously do a fantastic job. And so I wanted to bring her on the show this morning just to talk about some of the different things that uh, are happening industry-wide right now. We're going to talk about some current events and then some things that you need to know uh, from the uh, law side of things when it comes time to buy or sell a home. So good morning, Christy. Good morning, Brian. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. So first and foremost, because this is your first time on the show, tell us a little bit more about your law firm. Sure. So um, we are general practice, meaning we handle cases in various areas of law. I personally work primarily in the real estate world. However, I have colleagues who focus on other areas of law as well. Um, Most commonly, we hear about family law cases, probate cases, estate planning, business entities, DUIs, uh, if we can't do it, we work with other attorneys who can. We always want to make sure our clients get in good hands, whether or not it's with us or with somebody else. Excellent. And so you guys do a really good job on the real estate side of things. And, and what I want to focus on uh, for just a little while here uh, are just some things that are happening right now that people really need to be aware of, because obviously a big portion of this show is just educating the public and consumers Uh, whether you're considering buying, selling, or investing in real estate right now or not, this is information that we're all going to need to have at some point in time, right? The majority of us are going to buy or sell a home. Um, And so for those of you that tune in on a consistent basis, I appreciate that. We think the show is pretty entertaining in value. Um, So Christy, let me ask you this. There's something happening right now that's actually been happening for quite a while that's a really major concern, uh, and that's wire fraud. Absolutely. One of the biggest concerns right now. Yeah. Everywhere I look. Just tell us a little bit more about what's going on. Sure. So it's it has been going on for a while, but it's increased drastically. Um, just from 2017 to 2018, it went up 166%. The FBI data says that there's um, been $149 million of loss due to real estate fraud. And that's only considering um, 12 to 15% of the fraud that actually happens. That's just what's reported. Oh my so gosh. there's a lot going on out there. Um, You know, like you were saying, you might not be buying or selling right now, but you will at some point or someone you know, someone you love is. They don't do it every day, most people. Um, So this is a big transaction to them um, and it's a new process for them. So this wire fraud is not even on their radar and the fraudsters who do it are, are so advanced. They're very smart. Obviously, this is what they do. They know how to do it. They can do it well and it can be devastating for people. We're talking large amounts of money here. Yeah, I mean, down payments for for real estate, entire sums of cash for purchases. Right, sellers' whole proceeds. Oh my gosh. 
I mean, and that's so $150 million, and let's just call it 10%, is reported to what, 12 to 15%. There's over a billion dollars potentially in, in just wire fraud. Yes, it's crazy. So, what are some things that people can do to protect themselves from that? Sure. So, first and foremost, when you're working with your law firm, um, they all, we all, pretty much any firm I've worked with, we have disclosures and warnings about it. Um, we don't change our wiring instructions very often. If we do, uh, we usually let our clients know for this very fact so that we can um, make sure that they're cautious. Um, so don't ever be afraid to call your firm, verify. Are these your closing instructions or I'm headed to the bank, I just want to verify. Have your bank called. Don't hold back. Just It's better safe than sorry. Um, if you receive an email, we may have been emailing back and forth with you. Um, it may look like our email address, but the fraudsters know when to intercept. So if you get an email... Does it sound like our language? Does it sound like your real estate agent's language? Is that how they, um, is, are those the words they use? Are things spelled correctly? Um, hover over their real or their email address. It can look just like their email address, but then you hover over and it's actually um, a fake address designed to look just like your agent's address or whoever it's supposed to come from. Um, it actually can appear to be exactly from them, but they ghost over the um, email address. I'm not exactly sure the, all the IT. They, they've done it to me. They've yeah. done it to me. They, they, uh, so I think people go to my website, they see the people that are on my team, they know that I'm the owner, and so they will pose as me and send emails to people on my team saying, hey, I'm stuck in a closing right now, um, but I needed to pick up some gift cards for a closing gift for a client. Can you run to you know blah, blah, blah and pick up $150 in um, gift cards? And Every single time, obviously, a team member has come to me and said, hey, do you really need me to do this? <laughs> and I'm like, no, absolutely not. It's a scam. I- I'm not entirely sure what they think is going to happen once the agent on my team gets the gift cards. Like, hey, uh, go ahead and just mail this to my address in Kenya. Or like, I don't, I, I, it hasn't gotten that far, um, but we've, we've intercepted, obviously, all, every, every chance we've gotten. The other thing that has happened and probably happens once a week to us because we carry a large listing inventory is that we will get people that take our listing data, put it on Craigslist as though it's for rent, pose as the property owner, and then all of a sudden we're getting phone calls. It happens every single week um, for our listings that are for sale from people asking, hey, is this for rent? Um, I just swung by the place and I you know, I want to move forward. I just wanted to verify and thank God they do that. Um, but there are so many people out there that take our listing data put it on Craigslist and they're just rental scams. Have you run into that? I've, I've definitely heard of it. I haven't had to deal with any ramifications of it. Thankfully, a lot of the uh, agents and consumers are becoming more aware of it, but it's definitely a real, real concern out there. Yeah. Let's, let's switch gears a little bit. We're talking with Christy McDonald with McDonald and Associates, a real estate closing attorney uh, among other things. But when, when you're going through the, the contract to closing process, Mm -hmm. you know, you're doing things like a title search and, um, you know, we're, we're trying to resolve contingencies before we end up closing on the property. What are some things that you see, um, like in a title search, as an example, let's first just define what a title search is and kind of what that process looks like. And then what, what are some of those things that can delay or even stop a closing that people should know about? Sure. Um, so a title search, um, in South Carolina, we go back 40 years on a purchase. We look at the register of deeds, any, um, document that's ev- of record, we look at the chain of title, we look at the plat, we see if there's any easements, restrictions, basically anything that's gone on with that property um, that's recorded. We review it, we make sure that there's nothing that would prohibit the seller from conveying um, title to the buyer and that when the buyer receives that title, that they are getting good title and they know that they are the true owner of that home with no impediments or with no true impediments to ownership. Gotcha. And so what are some of the things that come up in that title search that would delay or even prevent a closing? Sure. Um, So one of the biggest things we see is um, estates that are not probated. Okay. Um, Then, you know, they're going to have to start that whole probate process if it hasn't already, if it hasn't been started at all. Um, We'll at least need a PR named uh, by the court that has to be approved. It's not just an overnight thing. Uh, Trust, make sure you have all your trust documents um, on the closing uh, contract. Make sure you're using the correct 
buyers, sellers' names, if it's being bought or sold as an entity, make sure you have that information up front. Um, like with estates, as an example, we're talking about people that, that pass away that mm-hmm. own property without a will, right? without a written document that tells uh, the court how to disperse ownership to that property, right? Mm-hmm. So if they don't have a will, it's going to go by the intestacy statute, which mm-hmm. says this is how your property is going to go. That's how we always want people to have wills so that how you want your items to be dispersed, they will go to your wishes. Um, if you do have a will, it will still need to be probated uh, with the court. So, But both of those things require a lengthy process. Right. So right. It, if it, if it, So if they die intestate, meaning they don't have a will, um, how long is that process? I mean, I can hear it's about a about a year. Yeah. Pretty it, close to it, right? Yep. And if, that's if people aren't fighting or, if, yeah. you know, when um, <laughs> money or real estate's involved, you see another side of people that even your family members, you might not ever expect. So, oh, yeah. I've been doing this for long enough to see just about everything. I don't think I'll ever be comfortable saying I've seen it all because I, you know, We've done we've done so many transactions and, and worked with so many different people that I'm still incredibly surprised that some of the situations we come across. I'm like, wow, that's a new one on me, and um, it's it's kind of entertaining to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, how about just real estate contracts in general? You know, one of the things that we really stress on this show is the quality of the agent that you hire really matters. Um, and because I'm so big on educating the public and in not only hiring the right agent by asking the right questions and expecting the right things out of them. Um, but from your side of things, when you look at, you know, real estate contracts, as an example, I know for me personally, uh, because I, I'm, I'm still in production, I still sell a high volume of real estate. It always kills me when somebody makes an offer on one of my listings and the language that an agent has written into a contract to create some sort of separate contingency to the purchase is just so poorly written that uh, I feel sorry for the agents and ultimately the sellers that would agree to that type of ambiguous language. I mean, do you see that somewhat often? We do. Um, you know, in South Carolina, real estate agents contract is already written up. For the most part, it's basic. But when it goes beyond that, uh, you really need to lean on your brokers and your real estate attorneys to look over that wording. Um, as we just mentioned, people, when it money, real estate's involved, you see a different side of them. Um, real estate closings are very high emotion regardless of what side you're on. Um, so when those addendums or any changes are drafted, make sure they're looked over with a fine tooth comb. Um, call your attorney, ask them, hey, you know, this is a closing coming up. Do you mind reviewing this? Uh, you probably um, have a relationship with them or your client has a relationship with them. You can also, you know, e- even pay them to just look over that because it's so important. Um, right. Because the devil's in the details. You have to think, worst case scenario, if the other party wants to pick this apart, I want them to have nothing nothing to be able to come at us with. Absolutely. And so, you know, and just a small example, but uh, a newer agent on my team had a, had a question about how to write a contingency to a contract. Their buyer wants to be able to install a pool uh, for a home that they're buying. They want to make that a contingency to the purchase, meaning if they can't install a pool, they don't want to have to buy the house. And so they said, how do I write this contingency? Just, just this contract is contingent upon buyer's ability to install a pool. And he sent that to me and I said, no, you have to think about things from a bunch of different angles. You have the permitting associated with getting a pool. What type of pool are you trying to install? If you can install a pool, but it's going to cost you twice as much money, is that going to be to your buyer's satisfaction? Um, if you leave it ambiguous, what's to stop the seller from saying, hey, you can put an above ground pool in all day long. What's the problem? No, I'm not going to cancel this contract. And no, I'm not going to give you your earnest money back because you weren't specific enough in the language in the contract. And so one of the things I love about your, your firm is that you will work really closely with both us as agents and our clients to ensure that we are covered from a legal perspective. It's not just you know shuffling paperwork and signing a, a book of documents at closing. There's so much more that goes into a really fruitful relationship between an attorney and an agent and their client. And so I appreciate that about you. Glad to do it. So how do people reach out to you if they want more information on your firm? Um, Maybe they have a real estate related, you know, law based question, or they want to get their will written. They want to, uh, you know, talk about some estate planning, uh, some of the other functions of your, of your law firm. How do they get in touch with you? Sure. We have a, a great website online, just www.mcdonaldlawfirm.com. 
Of course, we have our generic um, email on there so that if you don't know who you want to talk to, you want to talk about multiple things, you can always shoot an email there. We'll have somebody reach out to you. Um, Our phone number is 866-931-8793. My personal email address is Christy, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-E, at McDonaldLawFirm.com. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you being on the show. Any final thoughts or anything else you wanted to to share with us? No, you know, Charleston's a great place, great great place to live, great place for real estate. Um, You know, just make sure when you are dealing with real estate transactions to pick a great, great agent. Um, It really does make a difference. All right. Well, thank you for that. Um, All right, guys, when we come back, we're going to talk with Tony Jameson, my team's listing agent about the real estate market, about what's happening if you're going to sell your home, what to expect, all that and more as the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues right here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. Stay tuned for more of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. 